Eastern Standard Time on a Thursday. Time to sew. And of course, we're going to do um, a Q&A as always. Um, I've got my hot tea ready to go, which I will move away from the wedding gown. <laughs> I've actually not been sitting there drinking hot tea beside a wedding gown like that closely. Um, typically, I'll keep it a little further away than that. It was kind of sitting there cooling and I just brought the gown over. So I'm going to move it out of the way. Um, so today, as you saw in the title, is going to be about how to really get a custom fit on a wedding gown. We're going to do that and then, as always, spend some time in some Q&As. You guys, as usual, you're welcome to uh, be in the comments, talking amongst yourselves, and also leave questions for me. You're welcome to shout out where you are hailing from. That's always exciting. So, um, basically when I'm talking about fitting a custom gown, what I wanted to get into is with this gown, um, the size is fine. Let me move this. The size is just fine. Um, the, the store bought the perfect size for her, but it doesn't fit her very well. Thank you for the thumbs up. Wow. That helps so much guys. When, um, whenever YouTube sees any type of interaction on a video, they're like, oh yeah, let's show other people. So that's why that's important. It really helps a lot. Um, but with this video, with this live, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you kind of the hot spots that I like to get into, um, to really custom shape a gown to a bride. Uh, for those of you who are just joining in, what we're talking about is this dress fits the bride perfectly it's the perfect size but it's not a flattering fit it doesn't fit um kind of like her body <laughs> it's not shaped like her body so that's what we're talking about a custom fit thank you for the thumbs up let me see the comments before we dive in and i'll show you everything i have to do on the dress McKenna, yes, my sewing buddy. She says, I'm working on a wedding gown as I'm watching here in Texas. Um, did you guys see my boots that I did in the, I did this in the um, promo on Instagram, like the reminder, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I live. And I was like, we'll see you over there, partner. But um, yeah, my family is originally from the Texas area. I've never lived in Texas, but my dad's family was from there. So, yeah, that's kind of what I was hoping for this, was that you guys would just plan your sewing, if you could, around 2 o'clock on Thursdays, where we could just sew together and chat. And remember, if you have a question about a project that you're working on or anything like that, you just let me know in the comments. And um, I don't really have it in my mind that I have to get, like, a certain amount of sewing done. Um, I want to be able to kind of, you know, answer questions, too. All right, I heart bridal couture is working on steaming a bridesmaid's gown. And Lori says, hello, 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 everyone. Hello from Glassboro, New Jersey. Marianne, I've never heard of Glassboro. What a cool name for a town. There's a bunch of glass factories or something back like Depression era glass or something. I love the history. Love the history of town names. All right, I'm going to try to not give you guys too much of an earthquake. Moving the tripod. That's French for tripod. <laughs> All right, so this in itself is going to be a really interesting um, thing for you guys to see. Oh, Jacqueline's own working on an Irish dance dress. How cool is that? All right, so... These are kind of what my notes look like. I I do write like in, in mice type. <laughs> I write really, really small a lot of times. Um, but after I have an appointment or during the appointment, um, you know, I write the things that I have to do that are charged, like itemized. Um, I write them on um, their contract. But I always do for... Okay, the contract is for the span of the project, right? And then 
the post-it notes are for what is due for her next appointment, if that makes sense. So contract is the whole scope of the project with the pricing and all that, the ranges. Then I add a post-it note each time she comes. And so at the end of the project, you have whole scope of project with prices. You have a stack of post-it notes for however many appointments she ended up having. Having They're kind of like my work orders, my short-term work orders. And then at the bottom, you have your um, where she signs off on it. So that's kind of the way it's done, you know, at the end. It's kind of cool. I get to flip back through these and see what all we did because I do forget. But this is the way I take my notes. I usually mix up text with some abbreviations and then also some sketching um, because I feel like I need all of that. Let's see here. So the first thing I'm going to do is, let me close that. Let's see, where's this going to? Do, do, do. Sorry, I've got, I hate it when that happens. All of a sudden, all this stuff comes up from YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so task number one will be tighten the bodice top one quarter inch folded. Okay, so the reason why I say folded, and remember, for those of you just joining on, this dress is the right size. It fits her, but it doesn't fit her. It's not like contoured, like the nuances. This is the current buzzword everybody's using the nuances of her shape are not in this dress. And we've got to get that in there to give her that amazing show-stopping custom fit. So that's kind of what this live is about. But I like to say like a quarter of an inch folded. That would mean like this. Like that means it's a quarter of an inch if you pinch it. And if it was flat, it, you're going to be taking it up a total of a half an inch. That's what that means. I like to take notes in those terms and think in those terms. Um, because you've seen in my other video, sometimes I take it in more up front and less in the back and vice versa. So, you know, if we have a girl who's smaller chested, but she carries a lot of weight in her back, um, we might would do like a small bust adjustment to just reduce this apex a little bit and then kind of bring the front back a little bit. But I might would actually even let the back out a little bit. And so I want to be able to write out each of those as separate measurements as needed. So when I say a quarter inch folded, I know it's going to be the same on both sides. It's just going to be a straight half inch. So that's what I mean by my language there. And um, if you guys work on a team of sewists or seamsters, whatever you call them, um, make sure you don't go changing stuff like that. <laughs> don't go changing stuff, the language. You, you got your own group language, unless you guys all agree on it, okay? BPs. Anybody uh, guess what BPs are? Bird bus pads. She needs some push-up pads added in there. So I always write BPs. All right. And then here's another picture of a bust. This is really like, it's so round. It's almost like a cartoon. Look at how round. So that's how I drew it. I'm going to hand stitch to bring the angle of the top in a little bit. So what I'm saying is, yep, there it is. There's some extra stuff in this outer layer. So I'm not having to change the inside of the dress. Um, I'm not having to change out these cups. I'm not having to move boning. None of that. It's most of the issue is happening in these outer layers right here. And with the lace and instead of doing anything too destructive or too deep I'm literally just going to hand stitch and I have a short on this somewhere a YouTube short but I do a ladder stitch like this boom, 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 back and forth and then pull on it and it'll just come right together 
and be nice and smooth. So I'm probably just going to like lift off this flower, you know, and then put that on when I'm done after I press it. So there's that. Man, my hands are dry. Tis the season. I should have put lotion on. You guys know the rule with lotion with hand sewists, right? I'm already like naturally inclined to have dry skin. I'm really not that old, guys. But I'm inclined to have dry skin. Um, and then of course we can't put lotion on our hands, you know, with a lot of dresses while we're at work. Some dresses you can. And then um, I also shoot high contrast and I try to light my videos high contrast. So that makes everything worse. <laughs> I look like a turtle. Okay, so let's see. This is the next thing we would do is bring in the high butt. Okay, so I've kind of denoted where the waist is and then we've got the seam coming down. And there's a bubble above her butt there. So we're going to kind of bring that in. If that was on both sides, I would say both sides. But apparently it's only on this side. That's how it is in the sketch. And it doesn't say both sides. So it's either she carries this butt higher and this one lower. Hey, she could be a skater. Skaters. It's amazing how asymmetrical their musculature is. One butt, one leg will be built up so different from the other. All right. So then we've got these itty bitty darts we're going to put by the zipper just below the waist. It says hide some small of back darts. All right. So let's talk about those two things before we talk about the third note. And then I'm going to get to the comments. You guys be typing up your questions because I'm coming to the comments next. You can almost see this. Look, even just the way it's laying. Whoop. Compared to over here, it's not really doing it. So, yeah, it's probably like a manufacturer thing. So, that is that. I'm going to bring in this little bubble here. All right. And then when I was saying hide... you back out here a little too close to see sorry earthquake again when I was saying hide here's the waist right here I'm pulling on it it's gonna be right here yeah just below that before these merge in hide some small of back darts that means we're going to come in under here and just do this here and here. And that just kind of really brings in that lower back. A lot of times you'll have a dress perfectly fit to a bride. You're looking at her from the side here and you can just go like this <laughs> at her. It's like this bunchiness right by the zipper. So like here's her waist and you can just pull on it, but it looks fit everywhere else. Put some darts in that small of back and it's going to really thin out her back and she is going to love you. All right. And then hide an itty bitty dart beside the side seam of hip. All right. So that means again, we're going to be working under this lace. Wow. You can see it over here too. This dress has got some bubbles. It's this. You see that? Look at that. Got some bubbles. Now, this is a perfect example here. You know how people are like, you guys saw my reel on that. I can't believe you're burning the dress. I can't believe you're burning the dress. People fuss at me sometimes for heat sealing. But... They even do it in gown manufacturing. See those little singe marks? Yep, that's what that is. And I've noticed several of them on this dress. When you see them, you just kind of trim them 
and then maybe do a little bit more. Do it again, but try to not scorch it that time. So yeah, there's some right there. Scorching, not a big deal. It's an easy fix. It's much better than leaving the gown to fray. So there's that. But to each his own, if you're freaked out by it, don't do it. But don't come for me for doing it, right? All right, guys, I'm getting ready to read the comments. If you have a question, leave it now. Here comes the earthquake again. Moving this. Oh, my goodness. I'm so sorry. What am I hitting now that was not there before is what I would like to know. So annoying. All right. I'm so sorry. Yeah, you guys got a big earthquake that time. <laughs> there! Whew. That's what I was trying to do. Okay. Now let me read the comments here. Go back up here. Angie Gregory, a BST bestie. By the way, guys, you know how to do that, right? We've talked about it a few times. You go to desktop, you go to my YouTube channel homepage, and click join. And you can join a membership, and it doesn't cost much. And then you get custom emojis. And when you comment on a video or in a live chat, I will always respond no matter how busy it is. So that's why Angie Gregory has the little bestie sign by her name. It doesn't cost much at all. I made them very cheap on purpose, um, but it lets you support my channel and I get to kind of recognize you guys too. I like that. So Angie Gregory, one thing I would love to know, do you put the understitching back on? It is so hard sometimes to put that back as it was. All right. That is a great question. The answer is sometimes, okay? You guys know what she's talking about when she says understitching, right? It's this right here. Thank you, Angie. Ding, ding, ding. You get bonus points for not calling this top stitching. This is not top stitching. <laughs> and people call it top stitching all the time. This, this is... You know, obviously they're sewing a zipper down with it. It's functional, but this would be more kind of like what a top stitch would look like. Ignore the fact that it's functional for a zipper, but it's something that you see on the outside of the garment and it's a, it can stabilize things, but it's there to be seen. There's nothing quiet about a top stitch, okay? It's on top. Under stitching is on the underside or the inside of the dress. And you're grabbing the seam allowance and you're sewing it like this under the machine. Pushing the seam allowance this way, sewing like this. It looks like a top stitch while you're doing it because you're stitching on top of the fabric, but it's not. It's got an understitch. And it keeps your dress from rolling so bad. So, it's, it's a finishing stitch. It makes a huge difference in a lot of cases. It's wonderful. Um, in many cases, the understitching is the difference between a dress looking homemade or not. And I'm saying homemade, not in the compliment way, like me made, custom, yay. I'm meaning homemade like people stop you and they go, oh, did you make that? That's what I mean by homemade when I say it that way. Um, the understitching really is a professional looking finish. And there's a reason it is kind of a pain in the butt to do it. And sometimes you can't even figure out how to get in there to do it. So um, Angie, to answer your question, what a lot of people do is when they work on the side seams, instead of going back in, you know, with machine and doing this understitching, they will just hand stitch the understitching if necessary. Um, I have mentioned in a few of my videos, instead of the understitching, a lot of times I feel like I get by with pulling it down in place, which they did not do before they put this understitching in. There's a big wad in there. <coughs> um, anyways, 
Um, I would pull this down, roll it down, make sure it's laying straight, cut out the branded hang loops. That way they don't make an alarming unwanted appearance through the illusion on the wedding day. I would put in a very neutral thinner, usually like a one eighth inch hang loop ribbon facing the bust. The tails come in this way. And then I turn the dress like this and I stitch in the ditch. Some dresses that would look terrible and it would really disrupt the look. Okay. Other dresses, it just flows right with that seam or gets lost in the lace or something like that. And it looks just fine. And it, it really keeps those layers from folding even more than an understitch does, but it's faster and it holds your hang loops in place. So um, a lot of times I do that and I feel like it's one of those like win, win, win ways of doing something. So great question, Angie. Thank you so much. All right, let's see here. Going down, Mary Ann, correct on the glass factories in the old days. Nice, 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 nice. McKenna, do you charge for additional fittings? No, I do not. However, I won't tell you that it's wrong. Um, some areas have problems with tire kickers and brides will just go from like, one salon to the next and get quote after quote and try to wear people down, um, waste your time or they'll take a fitting, you know, instead of it being 20 minutes, it's two and a half hours, that kind of thing. Um, what I typically will say, what I used to have in writing, I don't ever really hardly enforce it. It's just not much of a problem where I am. But what I'll typically used to say is the initial consult is free. And the fittings are free as long as you're contracted for the work. Um, but what I won't do is one extended initial consult slash fitting after another because the bride wants to take the dress and shop around. And then she comes back again and she's tying up my shop for a couple hours at a time, just feeling like a princess. And she's actually like broke and has no interest in using me. Like, I'm definitely not going to let that happen. So in that case, yeah, it's time for a fee. But outside of that, I don't do it. And then um, some salons, it's built in to their pricing structure. And I feel like as long as you're transparent about it and the bride knows to expect it, um, go for it. But I do feel like an extra burden comes along with that. You then have the expectation uh, from the bride to work her in in as few fittings as possible, which to me, it just adds so much more stress. Um, I've said many a time on here, I'm happy to run a bride back and forth as many times as I need to. My goal is for her to look like her dress was made for her. I want it to fit her so flattering and beautiful and fit her better than any dress that she's ever worn in her life. Um, I want her to never forget the way she felt on her wedding day. And I cannot do that um, with a full set of alterations in like a fitting or two. So I understand a lot of you guys, it's up to the bridal salon. Like a lot of you are not independent sewists and you work for a actual bridal sales, like they sell gowns, bridal salon. Um, and you might have some, you know, boss person over you saying, we need to get them in and out the door, two or three fittings. That's all we can do. You know, you're required two fittings, no more, you know, that's a lot of pressure. And I feel like, I feel like two things suffer. One, the stress levels of the sewist, the expectations are just like high pressure. And two, I feel like a lot of times the fit, the bride does suffer the fit just can't be as good. The hems can't be as accurate. Now, can you get good at it where it's almost the same as doing four or five fittings? Yes. Um, but I just choose not to work under that kind of pressure and I don't want any guesses. So that's how I feel about that. Let's see. Also, guys, tell me, how are you doing right now? Are you in the big fat middle of bridal season? 
I'm in kind of like the mid-Atlantic region, East Coast, USA, and we're right in the middle of autumn, and October is peak bridal for us, so we have got the pedal to the metal right now. Tell me what you guys are doing. All right, let's see. Do, do, do. I heart bridal couture. I also memo, memo myself folded. Oh, that's awesome. I'm not alone. All right. Laced with culture. Working on a dress for a Nigerian wedding and also my first bridal gown. It's red. Wow. Have fun. Demetra, hi. Watching you from Greece. Love your work and look forward to Thursday night bridal alteration techniques. Oh, okay. So, are you saying it feels like nighttime to you where you're at? I think you're talking about the time difference, maybe. Interesting. Or some of you guys aren't able to and you pop in to say hi, but you have to watch it after work or something. All right. Susanna Bordelon. What a fun name. Working on a plus size gown with the bust super high. Can you lower just the front bodice only? Like you do to shorten the back of gown with straps. Or is this a bad idea? I can't tell what you're asking, Susanna. I'm so sorry. Working on a plus size gown with a bust super high. Can you lower just the front bodice only? Oh, okay. Susanna, I think I get what you're saying. The name of the video that you're asking about is called Advanced Alteration Secrets. Go find that on my YouTube channel. And I think what you're talking about, that's the one where I take the bodice of the gown and I, I shorten, like I cut it and shorten it to the waist in the front, but I leave the back alone. I think that's what you're talking about. But that is the technique that I would do. That is a super common problem. The bust is like way too high. It's because the... It's not the bust is way too high, guys. It is, like you can see I'm emphasizing. Do you see the camera shake? It's not because it's way too high, guys. <laughs> it's, um, it's the waist is too long. So you need to shorten the waist. So I'm going to show you this. I have an ink pen this time, so maybe you'll be able to see it better. All right, so what we're talking about is do, 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 do. this is your bride. Okay, this is like her waist and goes into her bum. This is her natural waist. Okay, it's her arm. And the dress is sitting like up here. But all of this is like sitting just right in the back. She likes this. But this is the problem. So, yes, you can take this down. Like if they're if they're really freaked out by the modesty issue when you lower it because they bought it with it high and that's the way they fell in love with it. Sometimes you can just take the apex down. But if they need that cup space to accommodate their bust, you know, if it's too tight like this giving them the double boob look, almost a triple boob look in this case. Um, what you do is, I go over it in the video, you disconnect here and you disconnect here. And if this is like, you know, two inches too high, the apex to apex, you take off, you cut out two inches. And then you sew it back together. So this is gonna get sewn here. You sew your sides. So that means your arm size is going to be a little lower in the front. This usually is jerking them up under their underarm. So you usually have to adjust your back arm size. Okay. And when I'm doing all this, I just completely detach the straps. That way, every time we have a fitting, I just pin it together. And then in the end, I adjust the, the shoulder. I think that's what you're asking about. This is so common. This is such a common problem and such a common solution, but I don't see it done very much. 
Like, I see brides being turned out with the dress, like, way too hot. Like, this alteration has not been done, and it needed to be done. Like, Instagram is full of it. Um, so, you guys keep this alteration in mind. It's very, very common. I mean, a lot of times I'm doing this, like, twice a week. And then for some reason, there's a lot of sewists out there who have never done this alteration before. If you have a five foot two bride and these wedding gowns typically are made for five foot ten. And again, I get all I get into this in this video, but five foot ten, that eight inches is going somewhere and it's not all in the hem. There's a lot of it is up in the bodice. The, the waist is way too long. The bride needs a petite gown because she's petite and it's a tall. So you got to fix that. I hope I'm not barking up the wrong tree, Susanna. If I am, let me know. But this is still like a really good lesson for everybody. So one thing that I do want to talk about, I have been doing a soft launch, slow drip release announcement about my virtual retreat coming up this fall. And I can see right now there's not like massive numbers right now watching the live. So this is still in step with that slow release. The reason why I'm talking about this really slowly and in small batches is because it's a capped group and I don't want the enrollment to get like flooded. And for people who are like BST besties and they've been hoping and dreaming of going to this virtual retreat, I don't want them to get shut out. So I'm gradually mentioning it, but there's a virtual retreat. This, it's a week long. It starts the Monday after USA Thanksgiving. So it starts the last Monday of November and goes to the first Friday of December. It's five days. Um, there's information on my website, bridalsewingtechniques.com. So check that out. You can sign up for it. It is right now, it's $200 off my regular retreat week price, okay? So if you were to come in for an in-person retreat, it's $1,000 for that week, which is nothing when you think of business startup costs. I'm, it's not nothing when you compare it to groceries, but I'm just saying business startup costs, a week-long retreat to know all the ins and outs of how you want to open your business it is a tremendously good investment. The problem is not everybody can travel. So um, this is trying to relieve that pain point. It'll save you on travel. It'll save you on food and lodging, all that. You won't have to be separated from your family. But it's a week long, very intense. It is designed specifically for a worldwide audience. So it's a capped group. Um, I'm, it's not going to be like a thousand people. It's going to be a very small capped group. And I'm also going to bust you out into even smaller groups based on time zones. So that way my Australia friends or whoever you guys, um, can be participating in live streams and whatnot with me, live Q and A's and stuff at a reasonable hour for you. So that's cool. But you will actually get to see my face. I'll show my face. I'll show the front of my shop. I'll show a fitting with live models, several fittings. And I'm going to, this is how I got on the subject. I'm going to walk you through how you see problems like this on their body. Because there's fitting techniques to be able to discover what is actually going on wrong. Um, so if, if any of you guys have not signed up for that and you want to, please do that kind of soon. Because I'm gonna start my um, I'm gonna start my actual public launch on that soon. So hop on if you want to. All right, let's see. Do, do, do. All right, going back to comments and questions. Any quick tips for taking up lace sleeves, McKenna? I haven't done it before and I'm nervous. I know I need to lower the arms eye. I don't think I spelled that right. Yeah, but you got it close, McKenna. That counts. Since I'm taking up the shoulder seam. Oh, I love this question. Okay. Yes, McKenna, you are, you got good instincts, girl. All right. So taking up a sleeve, 
I actually want to do a short about this. I've already filmed it. So if you guys see it, it's in the pipeline. Let's say here's your dress. Here's your sleeve. Okay. What she's saying is she knows she needs to take this up. Like you pinch it and you see all this doesn't fit right. Okay. So if you pinch an inch here, then that lets you know you're going to have an extra inch. Like if the arm's eye depth already kind of felt good to her, you know you're going to have to drop this an inch. And you might well have to take this in an inch, right? Because you lost that. And a lot of times you have to taper the fit of the sleeve. Okay, so what I do, instead of doing all this and then it being so tight, you got to have a gusset. I do. I remove the sleeve completely. Take in the shoulder. Make sure that fits. M try it on without the sleeve. She gets to see her dress sleeveless. How fun. And see if you're going to need to lower the arm's eye. Sometimes it hits just right and you don't need to lower the arm's eye and lowering the arm's eye will give her even worse webby arms. Nobody wants webby arms. That's just gross. So a lot of times I end up leaving that alone. And then instead of taking it in like this, I leave it the original size here and then I come out like this and then go down. And this ends up when I sew it together I start like, okay, we took this up. I start here and I go, zhuzh, and then I go around, zhuzh. So I start from the top, zhuzh down, start from the top, zhuzh down. All that extra fabric is just going to be a little starburst of tool, and then it quickly goes into the new fit that I gave her. This little starburst of tool, you can put it in neat and gathered. It works like a gusset. And they love it. And it saves you from having to do all this fancy footwork in here. And it feels great. Okay. So I just gave you guys some gold. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I gave you some gold. Okay. That is not a super common way of doing that. Now, you know, I do have like sewing instructors that follow me. And then sometimes they copy my stuff. So if you see that <laughs> in the next couple of days <laughs> for somebody who's trying to look like my channel, you'll know. Um, but anyways, that's how I would do that. And I hope you guys love that. Do any of you guys do that that way? Or do you always take it in? I just feel like it keeps it from being too tight. Great question. All right, let me go back here. <laughs> Angie Gregory. Ding. Yeah, you got your ding, ding, ding. All right. Tammy Murray. This is my lunch break at work. Oh, thank you for spending a couple minutes with us. I am a dyslexia therapist at an elementary school and I sew evenings and weekends. I just sent out three bridesmaids and only have three left and one bridal gown to finish. Tammy, you're busy. <laughs> wow, girl, you are busy. I used to be a reading specialist, actually, and I still um, volunteer at my kids' school, and I teach word study and um, and reading, and I do dyslex dyslexia screenings, so you are so needed. I appreciate you out there helping people. You're helping brides and children. You are a woman after my own heart. All right, I heart bridal couture. I usually hand stitch the understitching. You just have more control to make it lay right. It's absolutely true. I also do the ditch stitch. It's crucial in my opinion. Thank you, I Heart Bridal Couture. McKenna, while I was trained at David, so there was only ever one fitting. Yeah. This is my first time having a bride come back for a second fitting. That's amazing, McKenna. Um... I don't know how it works out at your David's, but I can say around here, we can tell that David's only does one fitting. It's it the accuracy slips in a lot of cases, okay? So I'm not knocking you or the David's that you were trained at, but I'm just saying it doesn't always work out great in my area at some David's near me. Um Sometimes we have some cleanup work there. So Latrice, I'm a bride, so I'm waiting what to do and not to do. 
oh, you're wondering what to do and what not to do as far as like alterations, what to expect. Well, if you have a good sewist, I always just say you just put lots of energy into picking the right vendors. And then when you pick your right vendors, you can trust them. I heart bridal couture. I usually say my goal is to make it look like it hasn't been altered. Amen, sister. I usually don't have more than two fittings, but I've been doing it a long time. But I don't mind doing more if I have to. I think that's where a lot of people, That I think that's what a lot of people do, honestly. They try to do a round two, but they don't mind doing more if needed. And I'm not saying I don't ever do two fittings. I do. I'm just saying I don't have that number in my head at all. I, I just have them come back as many times as I need to. All right, let's see. Demetra, it's nighttime, 9.30 p.m., and I watch you live. Oh, wow. Thank you. That's so exciting, the worldwide audience thing. That was something I didn't think about when I got into YouTube. I learned it really quickly. I was like, whoa, there's people, like, watching my videos in the middle of the night. <laughs> it was so weird to, like, wake up you know, bleary eyed at like two o'clock in the morning, like a little bathroom break or a water break and like look at my phone and like somebody on the other side of the world was talking to me. It was so cool. All right, let's see. Susanna, yep, Susanna, it's just strapless. Yes, thank you so much. Oh, good, I answered the question, good. Oh, McKenna, thank you. I just got the first sleeve off. Your timing is perfect. Well, your timing is perfect, McKenna, to ask on a live. Naomi, yes, lots of good questions today, isn't it? This is kind of what I was wanting to do. I want to have this as like a backup where obviously my notes, they were only going to take a few minutes to talk about and I can get into sewing on it if I need to. But I really want these to mostly be Q&As, like sewing, sewing stumpers. Let's see. Uh, McKenna Hart, Latrice watching. All right, guys. So many good comments. We're up to 42 minutes. Um, do any of you guys have any questions about the retreat? Speaking of, you can ask me questions about both the live retreat, like where you come and like, actually stay here for the week. And that's actually a certificate program. Like when you leave at the end of the week, you get a certificate for the number of hours of observation. So that's cool. Um, and then I'm going to do the same thing for the virtual. You get a certificate and let me actually go get it and I'll show you what it looks like. Also on my Instagram, I've got pictures of BST besties holding their, um, certificate after they've completed a retreat. It's in my highlights. Let's see. All right, so it's like you can frame it if you want to. Some people like to display it. So it's like this. Again, I'm sure there'll be some knockoff. <laughs> There's going to be a knockoff on the internet in like two days. Like, oh, here's the certificate you get if you go through bridal technique sewing. <laughs> There's so much of that going on right now. Oh, man. And I do support there being plenty of sewing educators out there. There's so many sewing educators out there. I'm not against don't feel like I'm against sewing educators. I'm not. We need more of them, not against them. I just think it's funny, like, if somebody, like, verbatim, shamelessly copies. <laughs> All right, let me put this here. Okay, so back to the questions. Do you have any questions about the virtual retreat, because a lot of times um, lately I've been getting emails about that, um, questions about it as far as the worldwide audience. So I plan on getting up seriously like all hours of the night. I'm going to have some very late sessions, very early sessions. 
Um, so I'm going to, at the, um, at the close of the enrollment, I'm going to figure out everybody's time zone and work schedules. And I'm going to get you guys grouped up in small groups. That way we can do Zoom meetings. Like face-to-face. -face. You'll get to see my lovely face. Face to face, and um, I'd like for those Zoom meetings to only be five at a time. And we're all going to sign NDAs. That way, you don't have to worry about somebody like running with your information. Like when we're in a Zoom or something, you can literally talk about details of what you charge or, you know, whatever, whatever private details you wouldn't normally say in a Zoom meeting. <laughs> Because you're afraid, you know, somebody two hours away or whatever is going to put it online or, you know, copy or whatever. Um, it'll just be nice to be able to talk about finances and earnings and all that. Because I don't put that online either. I don't tell everybody the details of what I make and all that. That's just weird. So that'll be baked in. I'm trying to think if there's any other questions that I've gotten super common. Um Okay, I have gotten questions about, am I going to redo it? Like, if it's like, oh, I can't do it this time. Can I do it next time? Um, well, yes and no. Like, if I do another one, of course. And I would like to do another one, but, like, I can't not guarantee it. Um, this is my first time doing a virtual retreat. So I'm assuming that I'm going to learn a lot of things, and hopefully I could offer it again in the future. Um, and each iteration would be better. But it also just like, it may be so severely taxing that I'm like, just forget it. I'm only doing e-courses and I'm not going to do virtuals anymore. Maybe a virtual one-on-one, -on -one, but not a group virtual. So I'm, I, I'm hesitant to promise exactly how future iterations of this will look. But I'm not going away, you know. So, um, and there's also the thing, some people have emailed me and said, okay, this is my situation, blah, blah, blah. Do you think I would benefit from the retreat? And I'm like super honest about it, guys. I've literally turned people away. I've said, nope, I don't think you're going to benefit. I've, I've done that several people. I've said, no, I think you're beyond it. Or no, I think that it wouldn't be a good use of your money. Like your situation is so specialized. I think your money would be better spent doing one-on-one -on -one consults with me and just doing like we do hour long consultations. It's a hundred dollars an hour and we schedule private one-on-one -on -one Zooms and you can pace them any way you want. You do one or some people do one every month or one every two months, that kind of thing. Um, also talking about memberships that we were talking about before the channel memberships, there is one expensive membership level. It's like $49 a month here on YouTube. If you go to the desktop version and hit join on my channel page, you'll see it. It's called the coach War. It's $49 a month because it includes a 30 minute consultation each month. So there's some people that that route is going to be so much better. And then when they don't need it anymore, they can just scale back and do, if they still want to be a member, they can just do the, the $1.99 or $4.99 or whatever they are, you know. So it's not for everybody. And then let me see what your questions are. Oh, Latrice. Oh, I got you. I meant to say I'm watching to know what to do. Got you. <laughs> yeah, I misunderstood. I thought you meant you were watching to see how seamstresses work so you would know if you were finding the right seamstress. Isn't that funny? Well, we get all this stuff mixed up on here. All right. Let's see, McKenna. I know that the bride wants the arm hold lower because bringing up the shoulder made it tight and uncomfortable. Yes, that is common. Okay, Joanna, I love everything you do. I'm in UK at 7.45 p.m. I work with ballet costumes for 22 years now, but had to go part-time as I'm a mom now. And I do bridal or any sewing to make more, and you have helped. Thank you so much, Joanna. I love hearing stories like that, like what you guys do and, and how my channel has helped you. That makes it all so worth it. 
because I'm stretched thin too, as you guys can imagine. Like I still run a full-time sewing shop. Like I said, I volunteer at my kid's school. Um, I have two kids. Um, and like I was mentioning on Instagram this week, I don't publicly say this very much. And I'm, I'm, I, it came up because it was something in the news. So I don't talk about it a lot, but because I don't want to embarrass them. But my son is a type one diabetic. And so um, we're always having to help tend with him. He struggles with maintaining that on his own. So I have to help him remotely. And it's a lot. I feel you guys. I know, I know what you're going through. It's really hard to juggle it all. And we talked about that a little bit last week. Sometimes you just have to grow at a different pace because you don't want to just run over your family, you know, like family is number one. And then the business is here to help our families. So I'm totally in your corner about that. It's beautiful. All right, let's see. Laced with culture. I work from home. Will all the sessions during the retreat be live? Thank you for asking that. I forgot to say that. And that is a common question. Not all of the sessions are going to be live. I'm going to do um, the live ones based on time zones and what is comfortable for your time zone. So you would pick kind of like your general global time zone. Like, it'll probably be several time zones within one bracket, you know. You'd pick your time zone, but then also your time of day. So, if you're like, what well, works better for me late in the evening, then you would get in that slot that works for you for the lives. Because I don't want, this is my goal, I don't want anybody globally to have to miss any of the live Zoom Q&As and live sessions because of the time difference. That's what I'm working toward there. That's my main goal. Um, but there's going to be all the other sessions that are not live, um, like Zooms, where you're, it's a Q&A where the, there's a lot of value in your interaction with me. All those other sessions are going to be replays. So you won't um, have to have that, you know, fear of missing out or anything. Um, you can always go back and watch them at your leisure and you can even watch them after the retreat is over. So you wouldn't have to be afraid of like, well, I asked off, they said I could have off, but then I had to work two days at the end of the week and I feel like I missed it. No, those parts will still be there for you. And there's also support afterward that I'm going to be giving you guys. So for a few months after um, you know, you can shoot me DMs or emails or whatever, and I would not expect anything for my time. Um, because the whole point in the retreat, I should have said this in the beginning to give you guys, any of you who had never even heard about this, but some perspective, the whole point is the retreat is to get you into like opening your own bridal sewing shop or really leveling it up. So, it would be a lot of times it's like home sewers um, and they want to like get a storefront and go full time like that. Or they're a hobby sewer and they want to start doing this part time from their home, but they're not sure how to get that set up to look professional. So it's basically anybody who's wanting to kind of like level up in the amount of work they take, the quality of the work they do. Um, the professionalism, the business side of it, like how do you present contracts and um, deal with conflict and payment and all of that. Um, so we really get into like the atmosphere of the shop too. That's what I was saying. You'll see the front of my shop. Like I'll let you see me work with brides and how I say things to them and all the things. So that's kind of what that is. So Laced with culture, sorry, meaning I still have a full-time job. Can I still participate? Absolutely. And that's the other reason why I wanted to um, offer it where you can pick your time is because some people are going to have to do it after work and then probably stretch out the replays over a series of a few weeks. And they're, you know, if it's ideal guys, like if you have the whole week, almost like a retreat where you were coming in, because I'm going to be here day and night doing content for you guys. 
but I get it. A lot of you have to work or you have kids or special needs in the home or whatever. Um, that's that way you have your replays and your ability to ask questions later. All right, Hannah, what is the difference between the couture and alterations or am I missing where it's listed? Okay, Hannah, it, there is a glitch, everybody. I don't understand it, but if you are on mobile and you go to YouTube and my channel, if you're on an Android, you can click to join. If you're on an iPhone, the join button is not there. I don't understand why YouTube can't fix that. So you can either join from an Android phone or you go to desktop. If you go to a desktop computer, go to my channel homepage, click the join button. It should give you channel membership choices. If you don't see it there, you can also go to the community tab of my channel and it'll show you the three choices. I've printed them up on there. So one of them, I can't remember the prices, so don't quote me. It's something like $1.99, and then you get like the custom emojis pack, which is like super cool. So if you see like in my comments where we're commenting and some of us have like a little sewing machine we can type out or like um, there's like a piece of lace applique and then there's also like a monstera leaf and then a heart with a needle through it and heart with shears through it. Those emoji packs come with $1.99 or whatever the price is. And then the next one is like $4.99 or $5.99. I forget. Um, and you also get to have like private lives and private posts and stuff. Um, but it lists out all the perks. All right. I heart bridal couture. I'm in the Midwest. I have an alteration shop in a mall. Busy girl. I also do clothing, but mostly prom and bridal. I work around, ooh, 60 to 80 hours a week. Great day, girl. And any other time goes to my four-year-old grandson. And that is the heart of it all, isn't it? Four-year-old grandson. That's awesome. Those are really long hours. We, we might could consult if you're interested in trying to get those hours down a little bit. I think, we, I think there's some things we could do. Um, and then of course, sometimes, I mean, there's just sometimes during the year, guys, I put in those hours too. I mean, I'm not saying there's something, you're doing something wrong if you work that long, but if you want to work fewer hours, we can kind of talk about it too, guys. All right, let's see. And we're almost at the end of this. Lace with Coulter. Thank you. You're welcome, honey. Hannah, awesome. Thank you. I've been in and out due to day job. Yes, those things. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I was so nervous about starting to do lives at a set time because I was like, eh, what if life happens? But I mean, if life happens, it's not like any of you guys are ugly to me about it. I would just say like, I can't do it today or whatever, you know, but so far it's gone really good. I've only had one, one of these lives that I had to start 30 minutes late because a bride ran late, but it is what it is. So we all just make it work. I think all of us as women, we have kind of that ability to juggle. We're really interested in juggling for our families and jobs and all that. So, you know, sewing is a great side hustle. Well, I'm getting ready to sign out. Do you guys, any other questions? we got two minutes. I'm guzzling my tea. <laughs> I'm getting ready to start my shift here. I got all my brides coming in tonight. Do you guys work nights? I, I find it so fascinating um, how many sewists are like, yeah, I don't work weekends. I'm just not going to do that. Or, yeah, I don't work nights. <laughs> I'm like, wow. That, that's like, I'm so impressed. How I do my schedule is I'm open one night a week, and that's um, Thursdays. I'm, I'm always open Thursday nights, and then I'm open like two out of four Saturdays, but those Saturdays are almost like a double shift. I mean, we just work like gangbusters. Just, I, I usually have one or two helpers here. I call them air traffic controllers. 
<laughs> they're really like hostesses and they run the dresses and stuff for me and greet the people and, you know, flip them out of the rooms and all that kind of stuff. But we run bride after bride for a double shift. We give them 20 minute long appointments in 30 minute slots. That gives us a little flip time and bathroom time for them and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, we do that. We'll easily see, you know, 10, 12, 13 brides, um, on a Saturday. We usually try to work a break in, in the middle of the day, just because, you know, we run behind or sometimes we're human and we need to eat too, right? All right, let's see. I heart bridal couture, three hearts. Heart back to you, darling. Jacqueline Zone, thank you so much. You're welcome, honey. I heart bridal couture. Thank you, BST. Thank you for being thankful. You guys are awesome. Jacqueline's own. Yes, I work nights, but flexible with weekends. All right. McKenna, any tips for chiffon? It's a nightmare to pin, and every bridesmaid <laughs> has a chiffon dress. <laughs> I love it. I can't pin the hem even to save my life. Okay, McKenna. Yes, I do have tips for chiffon, and that actually sounds like a really awesome uh, um, title or idea or whatever for one, one of my YouTube shorts. But for chiffon, I would just like, in a perfect world, I would like steam it first, um, get it all relaxed, let it hang nice and relax. I would definitely fit it fully to her first and make sure it fits good and she's got her correct shoes. Um, and then that I have found the easiest way, um, if you want to thoroughly, thoroughly mark the chiffon, I don't always do this, but I'm just saying, get them on a block. So, like, if you find your hem allowance is, like, let's say your hem allowance is, like, three quarters of an inch that you want for your roll and your extra spring that's going to be in the hem. So, like, okay, so what I'm saying is, like, let's say there's, like, two inches of the dress on the floor and you need three quarters of an inch of a hem allowance to get it to hit right. Um, what I would do is I'd put the girl on a one-inch block. Have her stand on a one inch block. Don't stretch the dress, but you're going to go like this and make sure, you know, it's creased pretty even with the floor, making sure spring it a little bit, make sure you don't stretch the dress and just go with a piece of soap and just mark the floor all around and then you can cut it and do your hemming. I've found that to be the best when it's a very open weave chiffon that's just like all over the place and like sagging and you know whatever different lengths I think that works great um alternatively if you're comfortable with it a lot of times and this is what I would typically do I would just get her on the block and cut it to the floor and then all you got to do is like clean up your notches and then do the hem so that's how I would do chiffon I heart bridal couture yes I work every day but Sunday open till six I can see that, though, being in a mall. That's what I'm thinking. Being in a mall is going to make your nights naturally. I mean, you're just getting, your hours are going to be a little bit more extended, I think, you know? So, I get what you're saying. Uh, Varmel, I don't work on Saturdays at all. Look at you, girl. My Sundays are full fitting days. I hardly do any sewing on Sunday. Yeah, a lot of people do that. The time that's the the block scheduling. And I found that works good too. To have like a sew day, a fitting day, you know, that kind of thing. I do have a video, guys, on block scheduling. Search it out. Um, it will help you if you have scheduling questions, and then it will also help you set your shop rate, which is one of my most commonly asked questions. How do I know what to charge? How do I make sure I don't overbook myself? Both of those questions are answered in that video. It's a tremendously valuable video. It should be one of my highest viewed videos, and it's not. So I need to work on the thumbnail and title, but it's called block scheduling. If you search that, I think you might will find it. Yes, chiffon. It jumps. <laughs> Jacqueline's own. Gotten over the fear of chiffon. Yeah, we just have to get over it, don't we? We have to learn it. Uh, chiffon is a candy corn of fabrics. I actually love candy corn. Oh, speaking of that, it's fall. Laced with culture. 
There's a little trivia, and then I got to go. And we've been an hour and four minutes. Here's a little trivia. Do any of you guys know what flavor candy corn is? Don't Google it. Do you know what flavor it is? It was one of those things where I learned it, I think, just last year, what the flavor was. And I was like, oh, my goodness, it sure is. And I did. I never knew what it was before. You want me to sing the Jeopardy song? Any of you know? There's 30 of you looking at me right now, and nobody is telling me. <laughs> what is the flavor of candy corn? Do you know? Do, 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 do. Not a single taker. You guys have been eating it and you don't know what it is. <laughs> I didn't know what it was either. It's honey. <laughs> They're supposed to be honey flavored. Isn't that interesting? Butterscotch. Mm, that's a, I can see why you would think that. Yes, vanilla, <laughs> barbell, sugar flavored. That's right. Cotton candy, really? I've never thought about that. Jacqueline, I was about to say, honey, you almost won, girl. You could have just dove right on in. <laughs> I know, but why? <laughs> I don't know. Like, it's so random. Maybe it was an original honey candy, but I don't know. Candy corn? I don't know. <laughs> It's got to have some history behind it to be that shape. Yeah, laced with culture. It is. It's honey flavored. It's so funny. Well, you guys have a wonderful rest of the week. Thank you so much for joining me. If you haven't hit the like button yet, just ding, 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 hit that like button for me before you sign out. And um, let, me guys, let me know, guys, in the comments, even after we end this, you can leave comments. If you have any questions about the retreat. I'd love to help you get in before I do my launch. So I'm going to do the official launch with like a video and all that. So take care, guys. Thank you so much for being here with me today. And I hope you have many, many blessings on your businesses. Bye. It's so sweet.